It's time for the Vikings free agent of the day. Should he stay or should he go? And today that player is starting what left cornerback for the Minnesota Vikings last couple of years, Trey Waynes. You will need to pay him in the nine to ten million dollar range to return in 2020. Right now, um, our votes are 54.7 percent saying don't bring back Trey Waynes. 45.3 of you are saying bring him back and pay him that 651-646-8255, 651-646-8255. If you would like to join the conversation, Manny Hill, what say you about Trey Waynes? I'm on the, I'm not paying that. I'm not going to pay him that. And I think somebody's going to pay him pretty well. Yeah. What? So what, what's the projection or at least what's Let's the say about that 10, he's going to get? Let's say about, about 10, 10 million. About 10 a year. Yeah. Yeah. I can't do that. If he, if he would come back for like, Oh, five or six? No maybe. way. I went through, in fact, I'll see if I can find this. I went through the salaries today from Spotrack. Mm-hmm. Um, the $10 million range would put him the 17th highest paid base salary cornerback right now in the league. Yeah. Number number 17 on that list as we speak, $9 million for Richard Sherman. Now to get down, I will scroll down here. To get down to the range that you're talking about, which is no way he's going to take this, Jason McCourty at 37. There is no way on God's green earth. Trey Waynes plays, like it or not, a position where he is going to get paid more than five. And I'm yeah. guessing he gets 10 because the thing about it is, again, it's positional value, right? Mm-hmm. If Trey Waynes was a nice, take your pick of positions, running back, then yeah, you probably get him for a relatively good price. Mm-hmm. But when you're talking about a cornerback who has been a starter, who is perceived, I think he's perceived not as a great player, but a good player, I'm putting him, let's say, 18th, 17th among salaries. And I think you have to ask yourself, how much better, <clears throat> excuse me, how much better you is... you got it too. Yeah, I know. You're getting it I know, too. You got, it's, Every, it's, Declan's got it. Chip had it. it's I've got it. It's through the glass here. That's between don't blame me. <laughs> don't don't blame me for this, Manny Hill. No, you just it's going around. It's because we haven't seen sunshine in eight days. I know. Um, I think what it comes down to, Judd, though, is how much better is Trey Wayne's going to be from the alternative? Let's say. So, like, how much is he going to be better than, you know, a Mike Hughes or Holton Hill? Now, I understand the situation with those two guys, right? Hughes and Hill, like Hughes. You can't trust if he's going to be healthy or not, especially coming off this type of injury. We don't know what he's going to look like next season. Right. And Holton Hill, to your point, like you said already, he's one mistake mistake from being out for the year. Spent it for a year. So how much, how many eggs can you really put in that basket, obviously? But I think with Trey Waynes, you also have to ask yourself, how much better is he than the alternative? And if he's about the same as the alternative which would be i guess drafting a guy or finding another free agent for cheaper that might be as good as him yep then you got to let trey waynes walk you just have to do we should we see holton hill and mike hughes as one player and by that i mean holton hill it's off the field stuff you can't trust Mm -hmm. but when he can play he's pretty good yep Mike Hughes, it's he's been hurt, but when he can play, I don't think he's a disaster, right? He's a nice, right. he's a nice player. Mm-hmm. Should the perception in Egan of those two be as one of them is going to do it, and by that I mean stay healthy, play well, not get in trouble, because if you approached it from that point of view, it becomes a little bit. So instead of saying man, it should be nice for Holton Hill to start at left outside cornerback and Mike Hughes to start at right, which might be true. Right. That might be really nice. But instead of seeing it through that lens, should the perception of those two be as Mike Hughes is either eventually going to come back and be able to play, you know, let's say 14 games, Mm -hmm. or Holton Hill's not going to do something irresponsible off the field. And if so, I think he's a pretty good player. Yeah. And then let's say he can play 16 games. And that's your starting left cornerback in 2020. And but still, but then obviously, still you worst case, find a guy on the right side. Yes, right? but yeah. uh, but obviously, worst case, it goes completely sideways, and and Hughes gets hurt again in training camp, 
and Hill gets in trouble in April or something. Yeah. But I wonder if that's the way to see it to fill one position at least. As as if you let if you let Trey Waynes walk out that door, one of these two guys, or you know, throw in Boyd too. Now mm-hmm. now you're right. There there has to be a guy because I don't see a scenario in which Xavier Rhodes returns, but if we see these guys grouped together as players and think to ourselves, one of them is going to work at position X, left cornerback. Well, and the other thing too, Judd, and you and Chip kind of alluded to this a little bit in the in the last segment. What are they gonna do at nickel corner? Well, you know, I mean, if 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 yeah. Mackenzie Alexander is gonna walk, this goes back to what I said yesterday about there's a lot of holes in is, a lot is of decisions. Any, is Boyd good? I will ask that question. I do not I don't, know. I don't know. Like Holton Hill, I can tell you, I think is good. Mm-hmm. He just can't get in trouble. Right. Mike Hughes, it's not. I don't think Mike Hughes is a great player. Okay. But I think Mike Hughes looks like he's a nice player. So he could certainly play. Mm-hmm. But he's just got to be healthy. If he can stay healthy. On Boyd, I can't tell you. Yeah. And I don't know how they internally perceive him or think of him. Clearly, I would guess in in Zimmer's world. At the cornerback position, you're not kept around unless you're seen as a potential down the road productive player. But he's the wild card to me of somebody I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah, I mean it's 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 going to be so interesting because they have this team is depending on who they decide to move on from, guys that they cut and release. They're going this team's going to have a certain amount of cap space that they can dip into free agency and find guys well, to try and make them. Well, better. and we can clear a lot up for them too, though. Sure. I, I, I mean, we can make this. If you make a lot of difficult decisions mm-hmm. and and if you are willing to cut several veteran players, we can create some nice cap space for you. Yeah. And so there's only so many draft picks that they're going to have. What, what do they have? Do they have six draft picks or seven draft picks? I'd have to look. Somebody right now. called in off the air and said they had a and told me they had a an extra third round pick this year. In Rick's, which, well, by by the time we get to the draft. Rick will be trading back to accumulate 18 <laughs> seventh round picks. So don't worry about it. Don't <laughs> right. worry about it. We're going to have the market cornered on punters right. and kickers and long snappers. But that's the thing is like you, you look at this roster and there's so many question marks of, okay, what are you going to do at corner? You know, if, if, if Waynes and Rhodes are both going to be gone and then you got two guys that are still in place, but can you really rely on them for various different reasons? Right. What are you going to do with that second safety spot? Because either either Harrison Smith or Anthony Harris are going to be gone. Because you can't, like we've talked about, you can't afford to bring both of them back. And, okay, Everson Griffin, you're going to move on from him. Okay, maybe you've got some guys that can sort of step into that role, possibly. But those guys are free agents, too. Like Stephen Weatherly, I think, is a free agent. Yes. Yep, and we can talk about him as we get further into this. But then you got questions on the offensive line. Like, how are you going to fill all of these? How are you going to answer all of these question marks with well, a certain amount of cap space and a certain amount of draft picks? And what we don't know, and th- the most important question to ask them, and we're going to find out, but they clearly will not be forthcoming in answering the question, is what are they thinking about this team, this roster, and its chances? Because there's there's about three different ways that you could go. One is, and This is the one I don't think that they will do. One is the window is shut. It's time to start to let guys go and accept our fate. Yep. And Kirk is our quarterback next year, excuse me. But after that, he's gone. And so we'll just let the chips fall where they may. That's scenario one. I don't think that's going to happen. Not not even close. No. Scenario two is let's take another run with all of this. And we'll make some moves, but just as importantly, we'll restructure and extend Kirk's contract to create cap space, but we are going to give it our best shot here. And, you know, that's Zim saying, I'm, what, 63 years old. Mm -hmm. That's them saying Kirk's going into the last year of his contract, but let's extend it to get more money. Or scenario three is you try and run this thing back as much as possible with Kirk going into the last year of his contract sort of knowing in the back of your head if it doesn't work Kirk is gone and now you have a ton of cap space mm-hmm. and now you freed up now this this also is dependent on are you going to draft a quarterback how is that eventually going to be filled are you going to worry about that in, in the off season of 2020 into the 2020 season and the answer to that I don't know but that's the other one because if you just simply 
basically try and run it back as much as possible, make some moves, but not a ton, and say, that team was pretty good. You know, we made the playoffs, we beat the Saints, which mm-hmm. they could say, uh, but we're not going to extend Kirk. And now after 2020, if things don't go well, Zimmer's probably fired. Spielman, I don't know. But Mike is probably going to leave at that point. Kirk mm-hmm. is going to be allowed to walk. And now, you know, Kirk's contract coming off your books just basically creates salary cap. You're, heaven, you're essentially wiping the slate you. clean. Exactly. At that point, yeah. So I guess that's my – and I – scenario one, if you analyzed it and decided it was the right way to go, might be smart, but I think there's no way that they do that.